Hello, hello, hello. Today is Sunday, June 23, 2024. Here follow the solutions of my problem 204, a binary star system. I cover this in all details in my 801 lecture 23. So you could watch that lecture and you would see the answers, all the answers that you need. However, here we'll follow Keith Norman's solutions, which are of course much shorter than my entire lecture 23. If you're ready, I am ready. This is Keith's solution to Walter Lewin's problem 204 and it concerns a binary star uh, and I recommend his lecture 23 of 801 and also uh, one of his earlier problems, problem 33, covered quite a similar situation. So we have our two uh, stars, M1 and M2, and they have uh, a common centre of orbit or centre of mass, I should say, centre of mass, uh, and they are orbiting around. And they have the same period, and hence the same uh, angular uh, velocity. And so they're going to do this. If they didn't do that, if you thought they might have different uh, uh, omegas, different angular velocities, then something like this would happen. And suddenly now the centre of mass is round here, and they've got a lot closer, and who knows what they're going to do. They could spiral into each other, they, we, we just don't know. So it is essential for this system to be stable that m1 and m2 have the same omega. And omega t equals 2 pi uh, for one orbit. OK, uh, so I consider the centripetal forces required for the two stable orbits, and they must equal each other. Uh, I get this equation equals that equation, just considering the required centripetal force. So I get that, uh, and therefore for part A, the ratio of the masses is simply the uh, inverse of the, the ratio of the, the uh, radii to the centre. OK. For part B, I now consider the uh, magnitude of, of the gravitational force. Uh, as usual with these problems, the, the uh, vectors are always acting radially. Um, so I have this equals that, and similarly that equals that. Must be the same for, for both uh, um, stars. Uh, and note again that uh, omega is 2 pi over the period. Um, if you are unsure about angular velocities and the use of omega, Walter did what he called his million dollar lecture. It's only, I think, 15, 10 minutes long. Um, but if you are a bit confused about the use of, of omega, do look at that. OK, <clears throat> so um, I can now rearrange each of these, that equation and that equation, for omega squared. And noting that omega squared is this squared, I get this here. And I can then take each of these, that one and that one, and similarly uh, rearrange again, uh, and I get this. There's a little bit of uh, uh, elimination that, that goes on. Uh, so I get, I get this and I get that. I can then add that, those two together to get this, and I can add those two together to get that. And note I've got an m1 coming from this equation, an m2 coming from that to give me this, and from these two equations, most of it's common, but I get an r1 coming down here and an r2 coming down there. So that's how I get this. But then you see that that just means I've got an, uh, all I've got now is R1 plus R2 cubed. So I can rearrange 
divide by m1 plus m2 and I get that. Or, slightly um, simplifying, I simply take the square root and I get that. And that is my answer for part b. That is the period uh, of the binary star. Thank you.